welcome friends to new session of molecular biology central dogma with the discovery of dna double helix in 1953 researchers interest turned to the next critical puzzle how the information is encrypted to a functional product normally dna of eukaryotic cell is largely confined to the nucleus whereas protein synthesis occurs on ribosome in the cytoplasm some molecule other than dna must carry the genetic message from the nucleus to the cytoplasm this question gave rise to the central dogma of molecular biology a more modern interpretation of the central dogma of biology is that rna has structural and functional characteristics that are similar to both dna and proteins in many ways rna is therefore an intermediate between dna and proteins in more than one respect Central dogma holds the whole genetic information in living things. The scientist came out with three processes that facilitate the flow of information at the genetic level. The first is the replication, that is copying of parallel DNA molecule to form daughter DNA with identical nucleotide sequences. The second is the transcription, the process by which the parts of genetic message encoded in DNA are copied precisely into RNA. And the third is translation, whereby the genetic message encoded in mrna is translated on the ribosome into a polypeptide with a particular sequence of amino acids please see the chart on the screen which shows the flow of genetic information from dna to rna to protein and the second chart shows the extension of the central dogma to include rna dependent synthesis of rna and dna Central dogma was first stated by Francis Crick in 1958 and restated in a nature paper published in 1970 please see the figure this shows the origin of the central dogma of molecular biology by Francis Crick in 1956 now replication dna must be duplicated in a process called replication before a cell divides dna is replicated in semi conservative manner that is dna replication is one helix of dna results in two identical helixes if the original dna helix is called the parallel dna the two resulting helices can be called daughter helices each of these two daughter helices is a nearly exact copy of the parallel we discuss the dna replication in detail later now transcription the process of forming mrna on a dna template is known as transcription the product of transcription of dna is always single stranded rna the single strand tends to assume a right handed helical conformation like replication a transcription unit is defined as that region of dna that includes the signals for transcription initiation elongation and termination transcription differs from replication in that it does not require a primer and generally involves only limited segments of a dna molecule additionally within transcribed segments only one dna strand serves as a template the template strand which is called the minus strand or the send strand which is shown in blue in color that strand serves as a template for the mrna synthesis the enzyme rna polymerase synthesizes an mrna in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction which is complementary to this template strand the opposite dna strand we can see in red color is called the coding strand the non template strand the plus strand or the anti send strand the simple way to find the corresponding mrna sequence that is shown in the green color is to read the coding non template or plus or anti send strand directly in 5 prime to 3 prime direction substituting u for t that is uracil is for thymine If mRNA carries the code for only one polypeptide it is monocystronic if it codes for two or more different polypeptides the mRNA is polycystronic in prokaryotes this can represent the product of several contiguous genes in mammalian cells it usually represents the product of a single gene the 5 prime terminals of the primary RNA transcript and the mature cytoplasmic RNA are identical thus the starting point of transcription corresponds to 5 prime nucleotide of the mrna 
Transcription and translation was differing in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Specifically, eukaryotes have non-coding sequences of DNA known as introns within a given gene that separating coding fragments of DNA, that is exons. A primary transcript is made from the DNA and then the introns are spliced out and exons joined in a contiguous stretch to form messenger RNA which leaves the nucleus. We can see on the figure. This is the central dogma in eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Translation The composition of the complex changes as the primary transcript is processed, transported to the cytoplasm and delivered to the ribosome for translation. It occurs in the cytoplasm. A codon is a triplet of nucleotides that codes for a specific amino acid. Translation occurs in such a way that these nucleotide triplets are read in a successive non-overlapping fashion. A specific first codon in the sequence establishes the reading frame in which a new codon begins every three nucleotide residues. Codons are the key to the translation of genetic information directing the synthesis of specific proteins. The initiation codon that is AUG is the most common signal for the beginning of a polypeptide in all cells. The termination codons UAA, UAG and UGA also called stop codons or nonsense codons normally signal the end of polypeptide synthesis and do not code for any non-amino acids. When several different codons specify one amino acid, the difference between them usually lies at the third base position that is at the 3 prime end. For example, alanine is coded by triplets GCU, GCC, GCA and GCG. The codons for most amino acids can be symbolized by XYAG or XYUC. The first two letters of each codon are the primary determinants of specificity, a feature that has some interesting consequences. Please see the figure. The first column gives the first codon of 5 prime end. Top row depicts the second base and the last column gives a third base which comes in 3 prime end and combinations of these bases gives a triplet codon and the highlighted portions that is AUG, this is start codon, then UAA, UAG and UGA, these are the stop codons. In prokaryotic organisms, the primary transcripts of mRNA encoding genes begin to serve as translation templates even before the transcription has been completed. This is because the site of transcription is not compartmentalized into a nucleus as it is in eukaryotic organisms. Thus, transcription and translation are coupled in prokaryotic cells. Accordingly, prokaryotic mRNAs are subjected to little processing prior to carrying out their intended function in protein synthesis. In eukaryotes, processing occurs primarily within the nucleus and includes nucleolytic cleavage to smaller molecules and coupled nucleolytic and ligation reactions that is splicing of exons. In mammalian cells, 50 to 75 percent of the nuclear RNA does not contribute to cytoplasmic mRNA. This nuclear RNA loss is significantly greater than can be reasonably accounted for by loss of intervening sequences alone. Reverse transcriptase produces DNA from viral RNA. Reverse transcriptase enzyme catalyzed transcription is a reverse process of normal cellular transcription of DNA into RNA, hence the name reverse transcriptase. Certain RNA viruses that infect animal cells carry within the viral particle an RNA dependent DNA polymerase called reverse transcriptase. On infection, the single stranded RNA viral genome, approximately 10,000 nucleotides and the enzyme enter the host cell. The reverse transcriptase first catalyzes the synthesis of a DNA strand complementary to the viral RNA. Please see the figure on screen. It then degrades the RNA strand of the viral RNA-DNA hybrid and replaces it with DNA. The resulting duplex DNA often becomes incorporated into the genome of the eukaryotic host cell. These integrated and it is dormant. Viral genes can be activated and transcribed and the gene products that is viral proteins and the viral RNA genome itself packaged as new viruses. Retroviruses. Reverse transcriptase is central 
to the infectious nature of retroviruses, several of which cause diseases in humans including human immunodeficiency virus that is HIV, which causes acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS and human T cell lymphotrophic virus 1 that is HTLV1 which causes leukemia. The most widespread retroviruses in humans is HIV. Reverse transcriptase was discovered independently by Howard Temin and David Baltimore in 1971. They transcribed RNA into deoxyribonucleic acid that is DNA. Retroviruses differ from other RNA genome viruses in several important ways. They have plus SSRNA genome in two copies in the virion and also contain a novel polymerase commonly called reverse transcriptase that uses the viral RNA as a template to synthesize DNA. So, it is an RNA dependent DNA polymerase. Hence, RNA viruses that contain reverse transcriptases are known as retroviruses. Retro in Latin its prefix for backward. Please see the figure. In detail, we can say that transcription was classically thought to occur only from DNA to RNA. Reverse transcriptase transcribes RNA into DNA. The term retro in retroviruses refers to this reversal making DNA from RNA of the central dogma of molecular biology. Most viruses are however benign. Interestingly, approximately 42 percent of the human genome is composed of transposable elements that multiply by reverse transcription using an RNA intermediate similar to that of a retrovirus. An additional 8 percent of human genome is composed of repetitive genomic elements known as retrovirus like elements. This is the figure showing retrovirus. Retroviruses are broadly divided into two categories, simple and complex, distinguishable by the organization of their genomes. The retrovirus genome is typically made of three genes, the group specific antigen gene that is GAG, the polymerase gene POL and the envelope gene ENV. The GAG gene is translated into molecules of the capsid protein. The POL gene is transcribed into molecules of reverse transcriptase. The ENV gene is translated into molecules of the envelope protein. Simple retroviruses usually carry only this elementary information, whereas complex retroviruses called for additional regulatory non-virion proteins derived from multiply spliced messages. Retroviruses are further subdivided into seven groups defined by evolution relatedness each with the taxonomic rank of genus. Please see the table. It gives the genus an example virion morphology and its genome. First one is avian sarcoma and leukosis viral group. Example is Rao's sarcoma virus. Its morphology is central spherical with coarse C particles and its genome is very simple. Second one is mammalian B type viral group. Example is mou mouse mammary tumor virus eccentric spherical core B particles. This is a morphology. Then genome, it is very simple. Murine leukemia related viral group. Example is Moloni murine leukemia virus. Its morphology is central, spherical with core C particles and its genome is also simple. Human T cell leukemia bovine leukemia viral. Example is human T cell leukemia virus. Its virion morphology is central spherical core and its genome is complex. D type viral group, example is Masson Pfizer monkey virus. Its virion morphology is cylindrical core D particles. Genome is also simple. Now, lentivirus, human immunodeficiency virus. This is an example. Then, its morphology is cone shaped core and its genome is complex. Last one, spuma virus. It example is human formi virus. Its morphology is central spherical core and its genome is complex. Five of these groups represent retroviruses with oncogenic potential, formerly referred to as oncoviruses and the other two groups are the lentiviruses and the spuma viruses. All oncogenic members except the human T cell leukemia virus, bovine leukemia virus that is HTLV, BLV genus are simple retroviruses. HTLV, BLV and the lentiviruses and spuma viruses are complex. Virions of retroviruses consist of enveloped particles about 100 nanometer in diameter. A retrovirus has a membrane that contains 
glycoproteins encoded by the ENV gene which are able to bind to receptor protein on a host cell. It consists of an RNA genome contained within a protein shell that is enclosed in a lipid envelope. The virions also contain two identical single stranded RNA molecules 7 to 10 kilobases in length. Although virions of different retroviruses do not have the same morphology or biology. All the virion components are very similar. Life cycle of retrovirus. Group specific antigen that is GAG proteins are the genetic material that codes for the core structural proteins of a retrovirus and was a major component of the viral capsid. They are about 2000 to 4000 copies per virion. The pole gene encodes a three enzyme protease, reverse transcriptase and integrase that catalyze the steps of retroviral infection. The first step of replication is the binding of the glycoprotein to the receptor protein. The cell membrane degrades when they bound it and becomes part of the host cell and the RNA strands and enzymes go into the cell. The core disassembles partially allowing the virion copy of reverse transcriptase to start using the RNA genome as a template and the conversion of retroviral RNA to proviral DNA and is catalyzed by reverse transcriptase and is necessary for proviral DNA insertion into host DNA, a step initiated by the integrase enzyme. Reverse transcriptase also has an RNase H activity. Reverse transcriptase also has an RNase H activity by which it digests the RNA genome strand. Thus a transformation of RNA into DNA takes place in two steps. First, reverse transcriptase enzyme copies the RNA to form a RNA-DNA hybrid. Then the ribonuclease H component of reverse transcriptase degrades the RNA strand to leave DNA alone. After synthesizing DNA, the reverse transcriptase copies this strand to produce a double standard DNA called proviral DNA, which can direct the synthesis of mRNA and new RNA virion genome copies. Transfer RNA is carried by the virus and serves as a primer required for nucleic acid synthesis and facilitates immediate conversion of viral RNA to double standard DNA by the action of reverse transcriptase. Hence, the net result is a double standard DNA molecule that is actually longer than the RNA genome. Both ends of the DNA contain LTR that is long terminal repeat sequence whereas the RNA genome had some of the sequence at its 5 prime end and part at its 3 prime end. While this DNA synthesis was proceeding it's likely that the overall complex was being transported towards the nucleus. Regardless of exactly what the double standard DNA is when it gets completed it indeed is then transported into the nucleus still in a complex with the part of the material from the original viral cord, in particular the enzyme integrase. The actual mechanism of transport into the nucleus is known to be different in different retroviruses through a nuclear pore for some such as HIV while for others nuclear enter requires the breakdown of the nuclear envelope associated with cell division. Once converted to double standard DNA, the DNA enters the nucleus and is integrated into the host genome. The integration is catalyzed by a virally encoded integrase. Integrase becomes bound to both of the LTRs thus holding the double standard DNA in a circle and also interacts with a site in the cellular chromosomal DNA. The enzymatic activity of integrase then physically incorporates the viral DNA into the chromosomal site. Early experiments had suggested that the selection of chromosomal site for integration was random. Integration of viral DNA into host DNA is mechanistically similar to the insertion of transposon in bacterial chromosomes. For example, a few base pairs of host DNA become duplicated at the site of integration, forming short repeats of 4 to 6 base pairs at each end of the inserted retroviral DNA. These inserts are transcribed by the host enzyme into fresh RNA molecules which re-enter the cytosol where some are translated by host ribosomes while other RNA molecules become incorporated into fresh virus particles. Please see the figure on screen. The retroviral genome also contains a packaging signal sequence P which is needed for the newly synthesized RNA molecules to be incorporated in fresh virus particles. Please see the figure on screen 
when a retrovirus infects a cell. Retroviruses have also provided essential tools for biotechnology. Reverse transcriptases from avian and murine retroviruses are used universally to generate cDNA copies of RNA, which then can be manipulated with relative ease for cloning and sequencing. Modified retroviral genomes are widely used in transient and stable expression of cloned genes in vertebrate cells. Because reverse transcription lacks the usual proofreading of DNA replication, a retrovirus mutates very often. This enables the virus to grow resistant to antiviral pharmaceuticals quickly and impedes the development of effective vaccines and inhibitors for the retrovirus. Nowadays, scientists use retrovirus as vectors in gene therapies. If it successively happened, retroviruses can be engineered to carry genes into the body. When retroviruses have integrated their own genome into the germ line, their genome is passed on to a following generation. These endogenous retroviruses, ERVs, contrasted with exogenous ones, now make up 5 to 8 percent of the human genome. Most insertions have no known function and are often referred to as junk DNA. However, many endogenous retroviruses play important roles in host biology, such as control of gene transcription, cell fusion during plasmid development in the course of germination of an embryo, and resistance to exogenous retroviral infection. Endogenous retroviruses have also received special attention in the research of immunology-related pathologies, such as autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, Although endogenous retroviruses have not yet been proven to play a casual role in this class of disease. Now, let us summarize the whole session that we have discussed so far. The central dogma of biology states that from DNA, RNA is transcribed to serve as an information messenger that is translated into proteins. Central dogma came out with three processes that facilitate the flow of information at the genetic level. We can simply describe Central dogma as DNA makes RNA makes protein through transcription and translation process respectively. Reverse transcriptase is an RNA dependent DNA polymerase that uses a viral RNA genome as a template to form a DNA copy. This is a reverse of the normal flow of genetic information which proceeds from DNA to RNA. Retroviruses use reverse transcriptase to synthesize a DNA copy of their RNA genome. After the double-stranded proviral DNA has been synthesized, it is integrated into the host genome and directs the formation of virus RNA and protein. Retroviruses are a group of viruses with RNA genomes that carry the enzyme reverse transcriptase and form a DNA copy of their genome during their reproductive cycles. I can give you some assignments to work out. First one, explain central dogma. Second one, Briefly elucidate the overall reaction of transcription. Third one, what is the difference between coding and non-coding strands? Fourth one, transcription and translation are coupled in bacteria. Why? Fifth one, write the importance of reverse transcriptase enzyme in molecular biology. Here, I suggest some books for your further reference. Principles of Biochemistry, written by Albert L. Leninger, David L. Nelson, Michael M. Cox, W. H. Freeman. This is fourth edition, year 2004, published in Book News Inc. Portland. Microbiology, written by Lansing M. Prescott, John P. Harley, Donald A. Klee, year 2002. It's a fifth edition, published by McGraw Hill Higher Education. Harper's Illustrated Biochemistry, written by Robert Kincaid Murray, Daryl K. Granner, Peter A. Mays, and Victor W. Rodwell, year 2003. The 26th edition, published by Lange Medical, Magro Hill. Retroviruses, year 1997, Coffin J.M., Hughes S.H., Warmus H.E. are the editors. Cold Spring Harbor, Laboratory Press. Reverse Transcriptase, written by Scalca A.M., Joff S.P., year 1993, Cold Spring Harbor, Laboratory Press, Cold Spring Harbor, New York. This is a paper. Retroviral Vectors, written by Miller A.D. in 1992 in Current Topical Microbiology and Immunology, 158, page 1 to 24. These are the few websites I suggest. www.britannica.com slash eb checked slash topic slash 500460 slash reverse transcriptase. 
www.lehi.edu/jazz0/v07.html en.wikipedia.org/wiki/retrovirus thank you for watching this session see you next time until then goodbye